Hi everyone and welcome back to the Learning Stethoscope. Today we're diving into something essential for understanding cardiac physiology, the coronary circulation. Even though the heart pumps blood to the entire body, it needs its own dedicated blood supply to function properly. And that's exactly what the coronary arteries provide. So, let's take a closer look at how they're structured and what they do. We have two main coronary arteries, the right and the left. Both arise from the base of the ascending aorta, just above the aortic valve. To better understand where the coronary artery arises from, let's take a look at a superior view of the heart. Here we have the aorta with the aortic valve. This is the right cusp of the aortic valve, and just superior to it, we see the opening of the right coronary artery. And then the right coronary artery travels in direction to the right side of the heart. From an anterior point of view, we can see the right coronary artery leaving the aorta and traveling in the right coronary sulcus. It gives off several branches. The sinoatrial nodal artery, that goes up and supplies the SA node, which is the heart's natural pacemaker. The right marginal artery, that runs along the right margin of the heart, supplying the right ventricle. And finally, the posterior descending artery, also known as PDA that descends along the posterior surface of the heart. Let's go back to the superior view of the heart to take a look at the left coronary artery. Here we have the left cusp of the aortic valve, and just superior to it, we see the opening of the left coronary. Then we see the left coronary passing behind the pulmonary trunk and going towards the coronary sulcus. From an anterior view, we can see the left coronary artery passing behind the pulmonary trunk and going towards the coronary sulcus. It is a very short artery that divides into two branches. The left anterior descending artery, also known as LAD, or the anterior interventricular artery. It runs along the anterior interventricular groove and supplies the anterior wall of the left ventricle, the anterior septum, and the apex of the heart. Then we have the circumflex artery that wraps around the left side of the heart in the coronary sulcus and supplies the lateral and posterior walls of the left ventricle and the left atrium. The circumflex artery surrounds the left margin of the heart and continues posteriorly, sometimes gives off a branch called the left marginal artery. An important anatomical concept is coronary dominance. Coronary dominance is defined by which artery gives rise to the posterior descending artery, or PDA. In most people, about 70 to 80 percent, the PDA arises from the right coronary artery. This is known as right coronary dominance, and we often refer to it as having a right dominant heart. But in around 5 to 10 percent of people, the PDA arises from the left coronary artery, more specifically from the circumflex artery, so we call this a left dominant heart. And about 10 to 20% of people, the PDA arises from both, meaning it arises from the right and the left coronary arteries. In these cases, we say it's a co-dominant heart. Understanding the anatomy of the coronary arteries is very important because each artery supplies a specific region of the heart. So if there is a blockage, knowing which artery is affected helps us predict which part of the heart is at risk. So far, we've discussed how oxygenated blood reaches the myocardium. But how does deoxygenated blood leave the heart muscle? That's where the coronary veins come in. One of the most important veins is the great cardiac vein. It arises from the apex of the heart, travels on its anterior surface, alongside the left LAD. When it reaches the coronary sulcus, it follows the circumflex artery towards the posterior surface of the heart. From a posterior view, we can see the great cardiac vein draining into the coronary sinus, which is a large venous structure where most of the veins of the heart drain into. Then the left marginal vein, that runs with the left marginal artery, and also drains into the coronary sinus. Then the left posterior ventricular vein, that drains the posterior wall of the left ventricle and ends in the sinus. Then we have the oblique vein of the left atrium, also called the vein of Marshall, which is a tiny vein that descends the posterior surface of the left atrium and joins the coronary sinus. Then we have the middle cardiac vein, 
which accompanies the posterior descending artery and drains into the coronary sinus, drains the posterior interventricular region. And on the right side of the heart, we have the small cardiac vein that runs along the right coronary artery and drains parts of the right atrium and right ventricle. After the coronary sinus receives the blood from all of these veins, it then empties directly into the right atrium. If we take a cross section from the heart, on the right atrium, we can see the opening of the coronary sinus. So, most of the venous circulation of the heart drains into the right atrium. Last but not least, we have the anterior veins that do not drain into the coronary sinus. Instead, they drain directly into the right atrium. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps us grow and keeps these lessons coming. See you next time.